We're now going to look at persistent logins. And by this, I mean the remember me functionality that we can check, uh, enter our details and log in, and then we'll be remembered for a, a certain amount of time. And this is really up to us how long the cookie uh, takes to expire. So this functionality requires quite a bit of security consideration because what we're doing is we're, we're going to be creating a cookie that's going to hold a value which will authenticate the user. So we need to make sure that this cookie is as hard as possible to replicate in any way or brute force in any way. So for that, what we're going to be doing is in our database, we're going to be storing the remember identifier and the remember token. Now, what's going to happen is when the user clicks remember me on the login form, uh, an identifier is going to be generated, which is a unique or, a, well, it will be a unique random string. And also a token is going to be generated, hashed and stored in the database. So we're going to, we're going to generate two strings and then we're going to store one in here hashed and one in here unhashed. What we're then going to do is we are going to uh, store that in a cookie. When the user closes their browser and then reopens their browser, we're going to look up the user by the identifier. We're going to take the other hash, the other part of that hash that's stored in the cookie, and we are going to hash that and check it against this one. If they both match, we're going to log the user back in to their account. Now, when the user logs out of their account, or if someone uh, supplies the correct identifier but the wrong token, we're going to remove these from the user table. And that's just a security implication. If someone attempts to try to access someone else's account via a cookie, we just kill uh, both of them fields and we set them to null. So we're taking um, as much as we can into consideration in terms of the security here. So what we want to do then is first of all, add the element to our login form. So let's open up our views auth login. And let's go ahead and add this just in here. So it'll be above this here. So this is going to be a checkbox. The name is going to be remember. The ID is going to be remember. I'm going to have a label directly after this for remember. And the text here is going to be remember me. So we have a label next to a checkbox. So that's going to look like this. So when we check this and hit login, we can perform a check in our login route and then go ahead and do everything we've already spoken about. So let's open our login route then. So it's in roots auth login. And just at the point here where the user is successfully authenticated, what we want to do is check if this remember has been checked. So let's first of all add this to the list of things that are posted through to the form. So this is going to be remember, we'll call that remember. And down here we can say if remember is equal to on. So if that has been checked. So we want to create two items here, two randomly generated strings one of which is going to be the identifier that we're storing and the other is going to be the token that we're storing. So let's create a variable called remember identifier and that's going to be a randomly generated string from our random lib which we've used already. So generate string of 128 and we're going to duplicate that down and we're going to do the same for the remember token. And that's going to be app random lib, lib generate string. So we've got our identifier randomly generated and our token randomly generated. What we now want to do is update the user's remember credentials. So basically uh, what's stored inside of the database table. So what we can do to do this is create a handy method on our user model to do this. So let's uh, write this out first of all. So remember we have our user object here that we've pulled in. We're going to say update remember credentials. And into this, we're going to pass two arguments, the remember identifier. And we're going to pass in the remember token, but this needs to be hashed. So we're going to app hash 
hash remember token. So let's uh, create this update remember credentials method on our user model. So we'll go down here and generate that. So we have our identifier and our token. And to store this, all we need to do is say this update, pass in an array of columns we want to update. So we have our remember identifier, which is we'll set to that identifier that we passed in. And we'll set the remember token to the token that we pass in. Let's also quickly implement the method to remove the remember credentials as well, just so we don't forget later on. This is really important. So we're going to create remove remember credentials. And all this is going to do is it's going to call this update remember credentials and it's going to pass in null and null. That's pretty much it. So this updates them, this removes them by using the update method. So when we log in then, we're now updating the user's remember credentials, but what we also need to do is set a cookie. So Slim allows us to easily set a cookie. All we need to do is say app set cookie. And into this, we pass the name of the cookie. Then we pass the value and then we pass the expiry. So the name of the cookie, let's just pull this down is going to be the name that we set inside of our configuration. So if we go to config development, we have auth remember. So that's the name of the cookie user underscore R. So we just say app config get auth dot remember. So the value of this is going to be a string and we're going to pass in the remember identifier. We're going to separate these by three underscores, or you can do more if you want. It doesn't really matter as long as we can find a way to split these up uh, later on. And then we're going to pass in the remember token. So it'll be the remember identifier, three underscores, and then the remember token. So the last argument for, set, for setting a cookie is the expiry. So this is entirely up to you how long you want this cookie to uh, be active. And that will be how long your users are kept logged in for until they're automatically signed out. So we're going to be using Carbon, which is a date time library for PHP. And we're going to parse one week. And we're going to grab the timestamp from that. So to use Carbon, which uh, is installed along with some of our other dependencies, we didn't choose to install this ourselves. We just use carbon carbon like that. So we are now, if the remember is being checked, we're setting or generating a remember identifier, a remember token. We're hashing the token and storing it with the user along the identifier. And then we're setting a cookie. That's uh, the first step I've been done with. So if we attempt to log in now and check remember me, and um, we pull up our element inspector here, uh, sorry, our Chrome developer tools, we go under localhost. Let's log in with the user we have in our database. And let's check remember me. So I'm going to hit click login. So you are now signed in. We're signed in as normal. But we now have this user R value here, this, this cookie here. If we hover over that, you can you should be able to see the value of it. And you can see we have quite a lot of data in there. So now that we have our random string stored in a cookie. Let's check out our database. So we have the remember identifier, which is basically the identifier we can see clearly in the cookie. And we have the rem remember token, but this is a hashed version of the remember token, remember, because if, for example, our database was compromised and someone had access to this token, they would be able to, or the identifier and the plain text token, they'd be able to just put this into a cookie and sign in as your user. So what we want to do then 
is when we end a session, we want to log a user back in if this cookie is first of all there, and second of all, if it matches uh, that user's details in the database. And the place that we need to check this is in our before middleware. We don't have to do it in here. We can do it anywhere else really if we wanted to. But let's uh, say this check remember me. So let's create a method down here, check remember me. I mean, you can call this anything you want. If you want to call it persistent login, that's fine. And we'll be creating all of the functionality inside of here. Uh, and that will just be called before every request to our application. So the first step to start to check this is to see if we actually have a cookie available. If, if we don't, then there's no need to go through all of these checks. So we're going to say if this app get cookie and we know the name of the cookie it's from config so we say this app config get auth dot remember and we also want to check that the user isn't signed in if they're signed in we don't want to sign them in because that's going to create a redirect loop so we want to say if this app auth or if not this app auth so if that's the case then what we can do is just echo attempt login and we can see here that we don't see anything but if we log out we're not removing this cookie at the moment we will eventually when we log out but here you can see attempt login because that cookie has been set so let's delete that cookie and refresh and we don't see attempt login. So it's only when that cookie's there that we're attempting that login. Now what I'm actually gonna be doing is I'm going to be signing in using a different browser just so I can close it and open it a little bit easily. So under login, let's log in now as tabbycocourse.com and hit remember me and log in. Perfect, so I'm gonna inspect uh, the page and we're gonna come over to cookies here and we can see that cookie value. Uh, this is really useful as well to use Firebug within Firefox because we can also edit this value as well if we want to. So now that we've got this, we're in this state, let's finish up with the checking remember me functionality. So what we need to do is grab the data from the cookie. So let's say data equals this app get cookie. And again, we need to pass in the configuration key like that and then we need to extract the credentials so credentials we're going to explode the value of the cookie by three underscores and all that means is we then end up if we just do a var dump credentials and we just temporarily remove this check we'll see the following so we've got an array with two elements the first is uh, a is the identifier and the second is the other identifier but we that's our token that we've hashed in our database so let's add that check back in let's get rid of that var dump and what we want to do now is check that the data isn't empty and we want to check that the credentials uh, are or have two elements in them so we're going to say if empty trimmed version of our data, which is our cookie value, or the count of the credentials, which should be two, remember, doesn't equal two, then we want to say this app response redirect this app. URL for home. So for example, if we log out, we still have our user cookie here. If I edit this value and I either have some kind of malform malformed version of what we need, so this doesn't exist or we have nothing at all, and we refresh, 
we're redirected back home. So we're just uh, stopping the flow of what we want to do. So otherwise, what we want to go ahead and do, and we're nesting a little bit here, but we could tidy this up at some point. We want to grab the identifier, which is in your credentials at key zero. And we want to grab the token, which is in the credentials at key one. But what we want to do is hash the credit, hash the token or hash the token in the cookie at least. So it's the hash in our database. So it potentially matches. So we're going to say this app hash hash that. So now we have the identifier for the user, which is this here. And we have a hashed version of the token, which we can also compare. So we're going to grab a user. So we're going to say this app user where the remember identifier equals that identifier. And then we're going to grab the first record from that. So we can pull this down so it's a little bit readable. So now we should have a user as long as that identifier matches, we should have a user here. So only if this user has been found, are we going to do something? So in this case, what we could do is just echo. Okay. And within Firefox, let's just remove this cookie. Let's log back in. Remember me, log in. Uh, we'll go ahead and we will log out and we see OK here because this identifier has, has matched. Otherwise, if this value was edited for any reason, then it wouldn't match. But that's only the first step of checking. We now need to check that the hashed version of the token matches the hash in our database. So what we're going to do is check the hash in here. And again, we really are nesting here, so we could make this a little bit better. We're going to say this app hash hash check and we're going to check the token that we have here with the token inside of the users uh, row in the in the database so we're going to say user remember token so if that does match we want to log the user in now if it doesn't match so the identifier is correct but the token is not correct we want to remove the remember credentials. So remove remember credentials. Remember we implemented that method inside of our user model just here, which will just set them both to null. So let's check that this works first of all. That's really important that that does work because if someone's attempting to use that cookie to sign into someone's account, we don't want to let them. So we have our correct credentials inside of this cookie. We won't modify the identifier because we know that that's being looked up properly. But anything after these three underscores is our uh, token. So let's, let me just chop some of that off and hit OK. I'm going to refresh the page and nothing appears to have happened. But what will have happened is in the database where the remember identifier and remember token were, they have been turned to null or set to null. So now, regardless of how much this user is going to try to access this person's account, it's never going to be found. So we've protected that user against further attacks. So last step is to actually log the user in if these both match. So what we need to do is set a session as we would normally do. So this, uh, we're going to set a session with the configuration key from our config, which we did above there. So it's auth.session. And we're going to assign user ID to that. So the next thing we want to do is go ahead and set this app auth to this app user where the ID equals the same value from that session. So we can just copy and paste this or we could just say user ID. We want to grab the first record and that is pretty much it. 
So now we should be successfully signing a user in if both the identifier and the token are being looked up correctly. So we'll head over to Firefox again and we'll hit refresh on here, uh, unless we edited this, which we did. So what I'll do is I'll just delete this cookie. I'll go ahead and log into my account. I'll check remember me. That's gone ahead and remembered me. I'm going to copy and paste the URL from here. I'm going to close Firefox off and I'm going to open it back up. And we can go and paste that URL in. And there we are. Our session would have been terminated, but it has now been reinstated because we have a persistent login implemented. So that is pretty much it. It is a lot to take in. There's a lot to do here, but it's you know something that needs to be taken into consideration in terms of security. So that's it for the persistent login, but we need to again protect even further when the user chooses to log out. If a user chooses to, let's just open Firefox, chooses to log out, what we want to do is remove their persistent details so their identifier and their remember token. So what we want to do is under our logout route, we want to go ahead and do that just here. What we also want to do is remove the cookie as well. So if we, we first want to check if that cookie does exist. So doing the same check as we did now before middleware. So app config get auth dot remember. So if the cookie does exist, we know that the user has chosen a persistent login. So we can remove their remember credentials. We know how to do this. App auth remove remember credentials. And then we want to delete the cookie. So delete cookie app config get. And this is just the name of the cookie, the key at auth dot remember. So not only will that wipe the credentials from the database, it'll also delete the cookie, which is obvious because if they log out, we don't want to just keep logging them back in. So let's uh, bring up our cookies in our in Firebug and let's hit log out. You can see, first of all, that, that cookie is gone. But if we look inside of our database table, you can see that the identifier and the token have gone as well. So that is persistent logins complete. Again, it's been a lot of code and a lot of fiddly bits to do, but by doing it this way, you are uh, protecting against people, you know, having their accounts compromised more so than you would if you were just storing uh, any old value in a cookie.